Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to uh, code a Gibbs sampler. So we had our theoretical video on Gibbs sampling, which is going to be linked below. And I thought it'd be a good time to make a coding video on the Gibbs sampler. So this is going to be a code with me. I don't have the code written yet. We'll just write it together here. Um, so hopefully after the theoretical Gibbs sampler video and this coding Gibbs sampler video, you'll be a Gibbs sampling expert. So we'll be doing the exact same example we did in the theoretical Gibbs sampling video, which is sampling from the bivariate normal distribution with mean 0, 0, and the same covariance matrix which we had in the Gibbs sampling video. And of course, we can do this without Gibbs sampling. So using NumPy, we can just ask for the multivariate normal distribution, ask for 10,000 samples from it, plot the x and the y, and we get the same looking data cloud as we had in the Gibbs sampling video. But uh, just to check if our Gibbs sampling is working, this is good because we can compare it against these known correct examples and see how these samples differ from the ones we'll get from Gibbs sampling. So I don't think this should take too long. Hopefully this is easy. Uh, but again, the high level strategy for Gibbs sampling is we'll start somewhere, start at some x naught, y naught. We will hold the y variable constant and sample the x variable, conditional on that fixed value of the y variable. And then we'll change the y variable, fixing the value of the x variable. And that'll be our new sample. And then we'll just keep going from there. So uh, based on what I said, let's initialize some samples list. So samples is going to be, let's make it a dictionary. Why not? So we'll do samples x, and this will collect all the x values for the samples. And then samples y will collect all the y values for the samples. And let me populate something in there just to start with. So one and negative one. So that we're not cheating, sort of. We're not starting at the center of the distribution. We're starting a little bit off of the center of the distribution. And we'll see what happens. OK, so we want 10,000 samples. So let's say num samples is equal to 10,000. I think that's the same number I had up here. Yeah, 10,000. And so we'll say for blank in range num samples, it's just a two step process. So first we need to sample from the normal distribution holding the y fixed. So let's say that cur y is equal to samples y negative one. So this is going to get the most recent value in the y's sampled. And then we're going to sample a new value for x. So new x is going to be np.random.normal. And the mean again from the original Gibbs sampling video is going to be cur y divided by two. And the standard deviation is going to be the square root of three over four. So np dot square root three over four. If these numbers seem like magic, um, again, they're coming from that video. So this is going to be the new x. And then we just sample a new y as well. So we say new y is equal to, and it looks pretty much the same. We just need to put the newly sampled x as our mean and then divide that by two. Otherwise, it's the same. So now we have our new x and new y. So let's just throw those as our new sample. So samples x dot append new x and samples y dot append new y. Let me just double check. Let's talk through the logic again, make sure we didn't make any mistakes. We get the current y uh, first, and then we sample a new x. Using that new x, we sample a new y. We put the new x and new y into the samples. And yeah, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and run that. Successfully runs. Let's plot the x versus the y and see if we get something that looks kind of like that. So let me actually just copy this, plt.scatter. Uh, and then this is going to be samples x and samples y. So samples x and samples y looks similar to me, but we should do more checks just because the uh, the x and y scatter plot looks the same doesn't prove they're the same. So let's do some uh, marginal distributions. So again, marginal distributions are just the distribution of x or just the distribution of y. So let's do plt.histogram of the just x values we got from the built-in method. So let's make sure that works first. And I want more bins. Let's do, oops, bins is equal to 20. Okay, and now let's put a histogram on top of that of the x samples that we got. And those histograms should look similar if they're truly sampling from the same distribution. Okay, they look the same. Um, let me add a couple of things here. Let's put density is equal to true. So we're not plotting the counts, but rather the density. And let's also put alpha is equal to 0 0.5. So we can see through the histograms a little bit better. And yeah, they look the same. So um, this is further proof that because the marginal x distributions are the same, uh, we have further proof that we are actually sampling from the distribution we want to sample from. We can do the same thing for y. 
why not? Let's just do it. So this will be one, this will be y, and the y distributions also look the same. So it seems like the samples are coming from the bivariate normal distribution, and indeed they are. And so that can be tempting to say that the sampling method we use to get the built-in samples is the same as the one we use to get these Gibbs samples, but that's not the case. And let me show you how we can prove that. So let me plot, let me plot, for example, let's use the X variable. Let's do plt.scatter. And then we'll take the built-in samples X values and we'll put the uh, previous sample first. So we're going to say all the way up to negative one. Oops. And then we'll put the current value afterwards. So we'll do one forward. Uh, and let me make them smaller so you can actually see them. And what you're looking at here uh, on the x-axis is the previous x sample, or better said, the previous sample's x value, and the y-axis is the current sample's x value for the built-in method. And you see that there's no correlation between them. In fact, did I import Pearson R? Yeah, I did. We can actually print out the correlation. So let's print Pearson R and put in these two series here. And we just need the zeroth element of Pearson R, and that zero goes in here. So you see that there's a 1% correlation. So there's, there's no correlation between the previous X and the current X using the built-in method. Now let's do the same experiment using our Gibbs sampling method. And before we even do it, think in your head if there's going to be some obvious correlation or not. Remembering what you know, that Gibbs sampling is an MCMC method, and what we know about MCMC methods and correlation between subsequent samples. So let me actually do that while you think that over. So we'll put samples x all the way up to negative one. That will give us the previous sample, yep. And then we'll put samples x from one onward and that will give us the next sample. And let me put these into our Pearson R thing as well. Okay, so now we see that there is an ever so slight correlation. So it's difficult to even see from the plots. For example, here you see the plot is round, oval shaped. And here you see the plot has a pretty obvious tilt to it. And even if you can't really see the tilt, you can always print out the number. And we see that there's a 0.24 correlation between the previous X sample and the current X sample. So this is again, based on what we know about MCMC methods, since Gibbs sampling is an MCMC method. And even without thinking about that, Think about how Gibbs sampling works. Given the current place you're at, you move the X, you change the X, and then you change the Y. So that means the new sample you got is going to be linked in some way, correlated in some way to the previous sample you were at. So that shows that even though the results are the same from the built-in method of the bivariate versus the Gibbs sample of the bivariate, uh, that doesn't mean the process of generating was the same, as we can see here. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And um, let me know if you like this code with me format. It's still relatively new and I'll see you next time.